Hi there and welcome to the show. I'm Nancy Guppy coming to you from Gallery Mac, which this year is celebrating its 50th anniversary. Located just north of Pike Place Market on Western Avenue, Gallery Mac was founded in 1974 by Barbara Mac with the mission to represent contemporary art from established and up and coming artists all living in and around the Pacific Northwest. In its 50-year history, this beloved Seattle institution has captivated visitors with stunning paintings, as well as thought-provoking sculptures in a wide array of materials, including glass, wood, and bronze. The gallery has also, from its inception, emphasized community by encouraging collaboration and creative exchange among artists, art enthusiasts, and collectors. Gallery Mac is open Wednesday through Saturday, 11 to 5, and by appointment Sunday through Tuesday. More information is at gallerymac.com. We've got a great lineup for you, including Mural Masters in Birion, a slate of summer fun, and a new release from the great Sarah Rudinoff. And we'll begin with a snappy new edition of NARF. It's time now for NARF, Neighborhood Adventure Ramble with Friends, with your host, Jed Dunkerley. Hi there, this is Jed Dunkerley. Welcome back to NARF. And we're here at the Fry Art Museum on First Hill for perhaps the artiest NARF possible in the city of Seattle. We're gonna walk from the Fry down to the Sam, Seattle Art Museum, through the commercial core. And in the process, we're gonna hop on some pops. Now pops are, of course, privately owned public spaces. You can learn more about them at seattle.gov's Department of Construction and Inspection website. But today we're gonna to learn about some history, some art, have some fun. All right, let's go get narfin. Here we are at St. James Cathedral, opened in 1907 featuring a delightful little courtyard that'll take you right back to old Europe. Then in 1999, the addition of these massive bronze doors sculpted by Ulrich Hinn, who also did the doors at the National Cathedral in Washington, DC. Here we are at Freeway Park, built in 1976. This is 5.2 acres of brutalism, and nature, what's not to love. Plus, rated as one of the seven best parkour locations in the world by the World Free Running and Parkour Federation. I'm really good at parkour. Here we are at one of the pops. This is built into Seattle's building code for large urban construction projects, they are required or encouraged to have privately owned public space, often with nice places to sit and public art. Enjoy, this is yours. Here we are at the Washington State Convention Center next to one of what I think is the most poignant sculptural installations in all of Seattle, a work by Buster Simpson known as the George Monument. What you've got is a bowing nose cone from which grows ivy around a trellis in the shape of Chief Seattle. Then cut back by a negative profile wind vane in the shape of George Washington's face. Cultural assimilation, public art, Seattle. Now the commercial core has an abundance of public sculptures. For instance, Urban Garden by Jenny Ruffner. Here we are in the plaza of the IBM building. This is the site of the former Seattle Ice Arena, home of the Stanley Cup champion, Seattle Metropolitans. And what we've got here is a bronze fountain by a guy named James Herbert Fitzgerald, who in his era in the 1960s was the Dale Chihuly of his time. He worked in bronze, here it sits. Here we are in front of the downtown library. Behind me, I've got a fountain by George Sudakawa in 1960 called the Fountain of Wisdom. 
which as you can see is flowing mightily here in 2024. No American urban center would be complete without a sculpture by Henry Moore. This one's called three-piece sculpture number three, vertebrae. Here we are at Second in Madison, seminal work by Colombian sculptor Fernando Botero. Installed here by real estate developer Martin Selig. He owns Eve too, but her location is undisclosed. Okay, well, our NARF ends here at the Seattle Art Museum on First Avenue, home of the iconic Jonathan Borowski sculpture, The Hammering Man. But your NARF doesn't have to. We here at NARF Industries invite you to continue to go out and find, explore, adventure in your neighborhood, see the art, the history, the culture, and the communities that make Seattle great. Happy NARFing! Murals activate public spaces, especially in urban areas. Case in point, the seventh installment of Mural Masters in beautiful downtown Berrien. Mural Masters is an annual street art and graffiti event here in Burien, Washington. This is the seventh year of it, and we uh, are back now after a five-year break. We have 15 to 20 artists painting different walls around the city of Burien, and mostly down the alleyway of 152nd Street between 4th and Ambon. We want to make pedestrian walkways more accessible. We want people to be walking and feeling safe. And so if you have a beautiful area like a mural and people are taking pictures, they're more likely to walk through and eat at restaurants and shop at local stores and just be in the neighborhood, use public transit. And those are the things that I feel make a really successful neighborhood. We're painting a beautiful mural of the birth of a spirit. So it's kind of emulating the center source and us coming from the center source outwards as separate spirits. If you're really looking at it, the center portal source is really where everything and all the energy emulates from. And as we grow further, we go further into the unknown. Communication is a big part of this work, and I feel that this is the loudest way I can communicate. So having a larger and larger space to communicate this really is vital to the work, to the life, to the message itself. I grew up in Vietnam. I live right across the street from a movie theater, and I've always been visually stimulated. I was asked by Sam Sneak, close friend of mine for 30 years now. He called me up, he's like, hey, I heard you doing murals. Do you want to be a part of this mural master? And I was like, yeah, I would love to. It's summertime, it's, you know, what a great time to be a part of something. There's mural tours now that are happening around the country, around the world probably. And these mural events, you know, they're everywhere now. And when we started it, there was only like three. I see this value is adding energy to the streets, you know, having things for people to look at, you know, bright images and things like that, as opposed to, you know, gray, brown, beige, you know, types of walls. I mean, that professional look is okay, but it's okay to add some color. I've always drawn, I'll always draw on stuff that's from inside of me. And I think it's inside of a lot of people. Iberian murals will remain up through summer 2025. 
Location information is at muralmasters.org. And now, a few events for your summer calendar. Hop a ferry to Bremerton for a visit to the magical world of Alandon Gardens. Created by Dan and Diane Robinson in 1993, this eight-acre garden built on an old landfill features 350 bonsai trees, wooden snags, stalactites, and a gift shop stocked with one-of-a-kind items from all around the world. Open Thursday through Sunday, 10 to 4. The Seattle Recycled Arts Juried Art Show is back for the eighth year with an exhibit showcasing over 65 delightful works by 43 artists. The only rule, per usual, is that the materials used have to be used. Runs now through August 24th at Fogue Studios and Gallery in Georgetown. And finally, if you like Shakespeare and you like parks, Seattle Shakespeare Company's outdoor play program, Wooden O, is not to be missed. Family friendly and always free, this year's offering, The Two Gentlemen of Verona, is being performed in public parks throughout the Puget Sound region. Locations and dates are at seattleshakespeare.org. And that's a wrap. Big thanks to Gallery Mac for hosting us and a heartfelt congratulations on their 50th anniversary. To plan your visit, go to gallerymac.com. And we're gonna leave you on a musical note. Powerhouse performer Sarah Rudinoff recently released Together, an album of favorite songs she has sung from a wide variety of genres, including jazz, blues, musical theater, and rock and roll. In addition to the great music, Together is, at its heart, a celebration of collaboration and the talented people Sarah has worked with for over 30 years. Together is available at togetheralbum.com and mark your calendar for the record release show happening Friday, July 26th at the Century Ballroom on Capitol Hill. So here are Sarah Rudinoff and Greta Harley rehearsing their original song, I'll Meet You Here. Enjoy, have a great summer, and we'll see you in the fall. Nice. Beautiful, you guys. That was great.